Welcome to the IERA, the Islamic Education and Research Academy. The IERA is a registered company, registered on the 23rd of June 2009. One of the main players in the IERA is Hamza Tsortsis. Some of you may be aware of Hamza. He was the person who approached PC Myers at the Atheist World Convention in Dublin at the beginning of June of this year. Why do you hate Muslims so much, man? I don't hate Muslims, I hate, I hate Islam. Why do you hate Islam? Because it's stupid. Hamza is described on the IERA website as an international public speaker on Islam, a writer, lecturer, and intellectual activist. He is particularly interested in Islam, politics, Western and Islamic philosophy. And later, he has also led major pieces of research, including non-Muslim perceptions of Islam and Muslims, and embryology in the Quran. And Hamza is the head of the research department. He is responsible for ensuring all of the research projects are relevant to the aims of the IERA and are of the highest standard, delivered on time and to budget. Hamza will produce reports and papers related to theology, philosophy, science, politics and sociology. So, what research has Hamza conducted? Well, we are assisted in this by the IERA website itself. Under the Research tab, we see three items of research. Perceptions of Islam, London Bus Campaign, Christian Missionaries. The second two have absolutely nothing to do with any research whatsoever. So what about perceptions of Islam? What this research amounts to is the conducting of a survey of 500 people who were asked 20 questions. This is the only research that the IERA has done in two and a half years. Oh, except for the embryology, which I'll come on to in a moment. But before coming to that, let's have a look at the research that they have done. Here is the paper they have produced. A lot of effort may have gone into the publication, with all its pretty presentations. More work that went into the content, you may think. The research paper begins with an executive summary, a quote from the Quran. Then another summary. Then some colourful representations of the answers to the survey and then some profound conclusions, which means the results of the survey. Oh, and let's not forget the recommendations, such recommendations as the message of Islam needs to be spread, and who better to do it than the IERA. To call it turgid would be being kind. To call it groundbreaking research would be a joke. I mean, who would do that? Oh, the IERA would call it groundbreaking research. So this survey is a culmination of two and a half years of research. This is the best they've come up with. Until now, I did refer to their embryology paper. Following the meeting with PC Myers, in which the IERA's and Hamza's understanding of embryology in the Quran was shown to be an error. Aristotle also <laughs> describes the emergence of bones and muscle. Right. In sequence. Right. Okay. And it's like the Quran. And it's like the Quran. Which well, is does, it, does Aristotle say the bones come first and then the flesh and the muscles? Does he say that? Are you sure? Anybody that works I'll, 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 I'll let you think about this. Well, if you, are you, are you, is that what the Quran I'm not, I'm not saying Wait. it. Can you, can you tell, is, that are you what, sure? is that what the Quran specifically says? Absolutely. Bones? This is exactly can, what the Quran says. Can, chapter can, chapter 23. Because you just demonstrated the Quran is wrong. Yeah, but How? Because that's, that's, that's not what happens in well, the world. Well, this is what the embryologists are telling us. The this is exactly no, what the not. embryologist is telling us. No, they're not. I mean, okay. Embryologists... L let me tell you what Keith Moore said. I mean, you can disagree with him. He doesn't like Keith Moore. Uh, I, I don't know why, why you don't like... What he said on the page number 364A of his book, The Human Embryo, that in the seventh week the bones are formed, and immediately after that <laughs> the flesh is formed, and the flesh, the, the bones are clothed with flesh. Well, Keith Moore is wrong. He's an he's embryologist. This is, this is his field. It's my field too. Okay. I know he's wrong. You're, you're an embryo embryologist? The, the, yes. <laughs> oh, great. Wow. Wow. That's news to me. Okay. It's indicative of the level of research skills of those at the IERA that Hamza's sidekick, Abnum Rashid, didn't know that PC was an embryologist. But we can't be too critical. Unlike Hamza, 
Abnam Rashid is not the head of research at the IERA. I'm sure Hamza wouldn't make such a stupid mistake. Is it doctor or professor? Whoops. I mean, how much research do you have to do to find that out? But I digress. Just so that we are clear, it is Hamza's position that the Quran contains scientific foreknowledge, in this case in relation to embryology, and that this foreknowledge goes to prove that the Quran must have been divinely inspired. What he relies on in this case is Surah 23, and in particular verse 2314, which reads as follows. Then we made the seed a clot, then we made the clot a lump of flesh, then we made the lump of flesh bones, then we clothed the bones with flesh, then we caused it to grow into another creation. So blessed be Allah, the best of the creators. The research work conducted by Hamza involved a scientific and linguistic analysis of the passage. Or, to put it more accurately, it involved a crude and cumbersome reinterpretation involving the twisting and indeed bending beyond breaking point the meanings of various words in order to fit that passage into what we now know, what we now know by reasons of advances in science. It's been possible to follow the progress of this research as Hamza has kindly kept us up to date by posting on his Facebook. In September, Hamza's magnificent octopus was ready to be published. But there was a problem. Despite the great claims that he made about this, no doubt groundbreaking, piece of research, Hamza was not minded to submit it for peer review, where it could have joined the 325,000 published articles on embryology that feature on PubMed. Was he frightened of the peer review process? Well, that's not the reason that Hamza gave. No, Hamza required money. Why? Well, this is explained on the Just Giving site that was set up specifically for this purpose. It states, IERA Research has spent months researching a paper entitled Embryology in the Quran, a scientific linguistic analysis of Chapter 23, the old arguments from the 1990s have been updated with modern references. And so it goes on. We believe this paper has the potential to open the window of opportunity for academics and students of science to be encouraged to engage with the Quran and think about its message. We want to print 15,000 copies to send to academics and students up and down the UK. There are thousands of medical students, scientists and people who are interested in this topic. Therefore, we want them to have the opportunity to approach the Quran, and we believe this is a great way in achieving that. A little bit later, please donate. Don't forget, Allah will reward you immensely for this. As the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, said, By Allah, if you were to guide one man, it would be better than red camels. Just pausing there, one does have to note that he could have posted it as a PDF file on a file sharing site, thus giving the opportunity of everyone being able to access it. You may also have thought that if Hamza's claims were true, he would have been rewarded with far greater financial returns than a mere £10,000. But asking for money is not something the IERA shies away from. The Just Giving Embryology page is merely another to go alongside the six that feature on their website. More of that in a moment. But let's stick with the paper for now. Despite Hamza having only raised 4% of the £10,000 he wants, there are some copies of the paper in existence. And in fact, I have one, albeit only in electrical form. Having looked at the paper, my considered opinion is that it is shit. The contents of the paper are being addressed by other YouTube users. In particular, I know that The Rationalizer and Clinshaw are both working on videos about it. I'll leave it to them to deal with the contents. But again, I can't help but note, it's odd how the religious always show up after the hard work has been done and seek to claim the glory. Hindsight truly is a wonderful thing for the religious. Now, it may be that Hamza is a genius, and it's us who are the fools. It's difficult to say, as Hamza keeps his qualifications close to his chest. I've not been able to find anything about them. However, a small degree of insight was given when he appeared on the Magic Sandwich show. 
I mean, do you speak Arabic? I could read and write Arabic, and I've done basic grammar, yeah. You can't, you can't speak Arabic? No, I can't colloquialize Arabic, no. Finally, none of this would really bother me, save for the fact that the IERA is a charity whose objectives include to promote research into the Islamic faith and to publicly disseminate the useful results thereof. Although I suspect that should read to publicly disseminate the useful results thereof if you give me £10,000. So the IERA receive tax benefits by virtue of their charitable status to spout this sort of nonsense and also of course to spout the Quranic message of peace, tolerance and love as was outlined by Hamza again when he appeared on the Magic Sandwich Show. Let me, let me clarify the question again. Apostasy without violence. Does Islam permit that a non-violent apostate could be killed simply for being a non-violent apostate? Some interpretations have that view. So it is possible that, that Islam does condone a death penalty for a non-violent apostate. Yes, there is an interpretation. Okay. Well, yeah, if someone's going to fight against the community, yeah, they should be... Uh, they should be stoned to death. Yes? No, that's, that's, not, that's not the punishment. What is the punishment? Uh, from my understanding, it may be limited, it's actually a beheading. Beheading. And you're, you you're comfortable with that? Well, you don't feel any pain with it, that's the first thing.